Hey, what is up guys? Josh here, and today we're taking a look at Nickelodeon's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Casey Jones. Now, I gotta be honest, right here at the very beginning, this was one of those characters that I knew when this line came out, I was gonna be buying the Turtles, regardless of how they look, just because they're the Turtles, they're awesome, and I loved the toys back in the 90s when I was a kid. Casey Jones was the other character. Before he was even announced that he was gonna be in Season 2 and was gonna have a toy come out, I already knew that he was gonna be bought. But that's not going to keep me from giving you my honest opinions on the figure. But let's go ahead and first start off with a couple comparisons. Uh, these are the battle shell versions. I'm just going to grab two of them here. You kind of get the general idea just because they're different in height. Donatello's the tallest. And then Leonardo and you know Mikey and Raph are all about the same size. So as you can see, he's a little bit taller there. That I think is represented in this show as well. Uh, grab a couple other guys for you. The first release... Uh, turtles here. Here you have Donnie and Leo again. Uh, these guys are a little bit taller than the battle shell versions, but where the um, what is it? The battle shell versions are a little bit more anime accurate or cartoon accurate, which kind of pairs up really nicely with this figure. Uh, last guy that I will do a comparison with is there is Donatello from the Vintage line. Yeah, there you go. So he's you know a lot more shorter figure there. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into this guy. Now, there's a couple of things that I, I feel like they missed out on a few details. And the whole thing is they're trying to get these figures out for 9 bucks. Whatever the size is, whatever if they have to decrease in size and it really doesn't scale up that well. Like whenever you look at uh, Snakeweed or Dog Pound. Uh, they're trying to stay in that $9 price range so that it's affordable for, you know, not necessarily collectors, but, you know, kids and they can try to collect them all. Uh, just like they did back in the 90s whenever they came out with the original release. But this guy isn't too bad looking. Uh, you know, I do... I don't know how fond of the character I am in the cartoon. Uh, maybe he'll grow on me a little bit. But I, I do like the way that this turned out. Now, it is with its negatives as well. Uh, a couple things that I wanted to point out that whenever you look at the back of the card, it's going to have a total different, I guess, the you know, colors uh, on that guy than what the final release had. So some of those things, the spikes here on the goalie um, pad or whatever you call it for the hockey goalie, uh, these were actually painted black. Uh, right here around the arm, you can see that little band right there, same thing here. And these forearms, those were actually painted brown. Uh, the, let's see, the other thing on the shoes where they are gray, uh, they are actually painted black. Other than that, I don't believe, oh, and I, I believe this was black. It, it's really hard to see and it's very small, so, uh, that's the only thing that I could see on the actual figure that was different. Here on the weapons, instead of them being white, uh, this was actually a brown with white tape here, and this was a brown hockey stick with, I believe, black tape, or maybe they were black tape, um, you know, where the, uh, where do, you, where do you hit it and stuff like that? I don't know much about hockey, so I don't know what it's called. Just tape to wrap around your stick so you look cool. Uh, but anyways, not a bad figure. It does come with this little mask, which we will pop off. And so you can get a really good look at. Focus that in. So it's got the nice little school design. It's got the holes in there. Do you kind of represent that of a hockey mask? And you can see that it's got those little two clips right there. And it just pushes on to his face. Uh, then you have his face painted, and you also have the hockey mask, which really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm not sure why would you need this if you have your face painted already. Um, but anyways, I wonder if they're maybe going to come out with a natural color face for him. Uh, this doesn't look bad. I do like this, and I actually like it better than having the hockey mask on, to be quite honest. But I wonder if maybe maybe we'll see that down the line as a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive or something like that. This doesn't bother me that much. It's not really the biggest thing that deters me from maybe not wanting it. Like I said, I was going to buy it regardless. Um, you do get a little bit of detail here. You get a little bit of white down here. You can see that he's got the catcher for baseball pad right there. If we get this focus here. Uh, right here at the knee, then it looks like he's got part of one with some spikes on there. Uh, he's got some decent mold detail with the keys. They didn't paint that, which they might could have. I don't know how well they would have stayed in the lines or it would have kind of blotched up on the paint and been all over the leg. Uh, that doesn't really bother me that much. Here at the front, you can kind of see that I guess this is supposed to resemble like a jock strap or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, but th that's all I could think of. This is obviously a hoodie. You can see that it's scrunched up in certain places, and you got the front pockets there. Obviously, you know, you guys, whenever you see me on Cybercast, I'm always wearing a hoodie, so uh, I just love hoodies. Uh, then you have the goalie gloves uh, for each side here. 
uh, the little thing up here. Not really sure what that's for. Uh, I think that's another piece of a catcher's um, equipment. And you've got the nice little hood, but it's it's obviously a different color of black. This is a little bit more uh, darker to where this is a little bit more lighter black, if that makes sense. I don't know how well it's coming off camera, but that's just kind of the way it looks whenever you get the figure in hand. Uh, then you can see here on the back, you also have this nice little detail with a little bandana or something out there, uh, and it's painted black. So I wonder why they did that, and they couldn't do my main complaint. You kind of see the brown coming around. If they didn't paint that, that would have been a huge disappointment, and I would probably get on customizing this figure, even though I'm not very good at things like that. But you can see that it goes around, it's coming around that way, and then it just stops. And it's all black back here. I mean, very, and we'll take his weapons out. As you can see, they just store back there, and you can rotate that however you want. But it's just all black through here. And that would have been so nice if they would have painted that brown. Now, I know if you're facing this guy forward, which you are more than likely on your shelf or you're playing with it, uh, it's not that big of a deal, but it's little things like that that I'm just like, w would it really have cost so much just to paint the rest of that brown? I mean, you're halfway there, so... Uh, should have done that. The keys don't bother me. Nothing really else, you know, bugs me too much. Uh, as far as articulation with this guy, he does rotate here at the head. And just make sure that uh, does rotate, you know, no bend or anything like that. The arms, this doesn't actually hinder this arm at all. So as you can kind of see that this one will go up just as much as that one. Uh, they can you know, rotate there, bend at the elbow. Uh, do they? No, no, they don't rotate there. They do rotate here at the wrist or the hockey glove. So there you go. He does have a waist that goes 360. The legs can go all the way out uh, and, you know, bend and do all that nice stuff and jazz. Uh, does rotate here at the knee, bends at the knee, not quite 90 degrees. And that's pretty much it. Now, as far as his weapons go, he comes with this baseball bat and he comes with the hockey stick, which, you know, I mentioned those earlier. And we'll just put them in his hands here and uh, see if I can get them in. I haven't even tried to uh, put the weapons in his hands yet. But, yeah, it's not too bad. And I, I like that you have this, like, little, I don't know, where the roller blades down here, I, I don't know if I mentioned that or not, uh, they obviously don't roll or anything like that, but uh, it's got, like, a little section right here that you could actually kind of bend him you know, forward, and he's just like on that toe. So I don't know how well you're seeing that, but uh, nice little display option there. We'll put his little mask on, and he's not a bad figure. Uh, I, I do like him. I'm happy with the purchase. There, you know, there's a couple of things that they could have improved on, but at the same time, you know, if you don't mind, I, I almost said like coloring your figure, uh, but or you know, kind of touching it up and making it look a little bit better, then this is one that you're going to have a lot, a little bit of fun with. Another thing, I guess, worth mentioning uh, before we get done here, you can see that they were a little sloppy there with the brown. You can see that it's kind of bleeding on over to the black. So that's something to keep in mind whenever you're looking for this guy. They only had one at my Toys R Us where I bought this, but you can kind of look in that and maybe you know pick out the better one. But thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, I picked this guy up last night and decided I wanted to do the review on him. But Monday, I will have the review up for this guy, uh, NECA Ed 209. And then Wednesday, I'll probably do Master My Creations uh, Fortis, or basically Headstrong. And then probably Friday, Masterpiece Smokescreen. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Talk to you guys later, and see you on the Cybercast on Saturday.